Dr. Marcia of Move With Marcia, and let's work on strong glutes with standing hip abduction. So why would we care about working on hip abduction? What is hip abduction? Who does it? Who cares, right? So abduct means away. So bringing the leg away from the midline of the body. Why would we care? Well, if we can do that, it means we have a strong glute medius muscle. Now in everyday life, that muscle helps us to bring the leg away and it's also a little bit of an external rotator, external rotator. So that means it is amazing for the full chain. So that means knee stability and control. That means ankle and foot stability and control, not just the hips. For example, I don't know if you can see my feet that good from this view, but if I have super flat feet, then my hip, it'll carry all the way up to my hip and internally rotate. So if I have strong glute meds, that might help me pull that leg up and have a little bit more support in the foot. Or let's say I'm doing squats and I collapse in. Guess what pulls my knees out? The glute med will help with that. Or let's say I walk and I kind of walk with a little, I'm a little unstable, or maybe I waddle, something's off with the walk. Guess what? When you do this and you stand on one leg, what keeps the other leg in the air? That glute med. So of course, that is a simplified way to explain that motion. There's a lot of moving parts in the body. One muscle isn't doing all the work, but if that muscle is strong, it'll definitely help. But let's talk about some options for standing hip abduction. First things first is that you wanna be able to understand what the heck your feet are doing. If your feet are in contact with the ground, that you're able to spread the toes, grip the ground, and create an arch, stable foundation on the leg. And the leg that's staying on the floor, you don't want to lock it out, and you want to make sure your hips are over it. You want a little bend. Let me show you what I mean from the side. So if I just lock my legs out and I go here, I am resting on my joints instead of using my muscle. I want to make sure my knees are in line with my ankle. There's a little bend. This is in line as well. So when I start doing the exercise, this doesn't change. The other key detail, now that we have the setup, is that once I get started, let's say I'm working this side, once I get started, I'm nice and solid, feet are squeezing, gripping the ground, little bend in the knee, pelvis is neutral, I know how to brace. If you don't know how to brace, there's a tutorial for that. I know how to brace, I know where my upper body is and I'm ready, but once I go to lift this leg, I'm leaning all the way over here, or I can't balance, or it's just ugly, right? Look at that. <laughs> what does that mean? Hold on to something. Because you do need to shift your weight, sure, but you don't need to throw your whole body over. So hold on to something and do that standing abduction. Let's move these blocks out of the way. So it could look something like this, or maybe you add some resistance or weights with an ankle weight or maybe a band. So if I add an ankle weight, that is a nice little amount of resistance, and I could play around with the reps, right? Maybe I do three sets of six. Maybe I play away with play around with the way that I move the leg. Maybe I go fast up, hold it, and then slow on the way down. Or maybe I go fast and hold it and come regular down. You can play around with all of those variables, keeping in mind that the isometric holds or eccentrics will be harder. Now, that's what it looks like with an ankle weight. Maybe you have a nice little loop band you can use, or maybe you have a cable machine. Just make sure that the resistance is this way so that you're pulling out against it with a long band or a cable. But if you have a loop band, you just use yourself as the anchor. So the loop band can be at the ankles, above the knee, it depends. But generally speaking, the lower that it is, usually be harder. So this would be harder than having it up at my knees. Now we don't have to just stand here and do hip abduction. We can add movement as well. Besides adding resistance, playing with the rep scheme, we can make it a combo deal. We could work on maybe hip flexion and then step out, do a little squat and come back, right? Or maybe we just do the step out to the side and come back. Or maybe we do lateral walks and we keep going side to side, right? So those are all ways that you can build those hip abductors, that glute med. 
You can also play around with a chair or some other surfaces for that idea with the isometric holds. So that would look like placing my knee on a nice solid surface, whether that's a chair or a table, having my standing leg nice and solid, the feet are on the ground, gripping, knees a little bent, my pelvis is not here, not there, it's just right Goldilocks in the middle, one straight line. Now for me, there's no way I could shift my weight and lift this leg without overdoing it, right? We kind of talked about that earlier. So what do I need to do? Hold on to something. So if you're not sure where your body is without looking at it, which is called proprioception, by the way, use external feedback. Totally fine. Use a front-facing camera, use a mirror, whatever you have to do to get purchase on where the heck you are. You know, what you're doing versus what you think you're doing versus what you're actually doing. It might not match up. So I need to hold on and I go here and I can lift and work on isometrics and hold it and lift and work on isometrics. Or I could go back to the other ideas, right? Just lift and lift and lift with, I could still do the ankle weight and I could still do a band. All the same concepts apply for doing hip abduction in this position. Really what it comes down to is your setup, your ability, what you're interested in getting done that day. This might feel easier because in bending the knee, you don't have to worry about that part of your leg. You don't have to worry about squeezing your quads to keep your knee straight. You might have to worry less about making sure you stay facing forward and don't twist left or right. Or this might be harder for you. I can't say. So what I can say is that you should definitely try out all the options, see how it feels for you, take videos or use a mirror as external feedback to see where you're shifting your weight, what are you doing with your foot, are you keeping the same energy as you go along or do you lose it by the fourth rep, right? All things that we need to do to move mindfully and really pay attention to what we're trying to get done. And there you have it, some great options for working glute strength in standing. So working hip abduction gets the glute med stronger, which gets your hips stronger, your knees more stable, your ankles and feet have a little more control, all with the help of that big old muscle in your butt. So if this video was helpful for you, what do you gotta do? Hit the thumbs up. If this video is, mm, wow, this is pretty helpful and I think I want some more, if this video is giving you that feeling, subscribe. If you have trouble remembering what day of the week it is, hit the bell, because that extra step will get my videos straight to your inbox, thanks to YouTube. So I would 10 out of 10 recommend, because you don't want to miss out. You might forget this exists. If you don't see it, it doesn't exist. I know I'm that way, especially with food in my fridge. Anyways, I'll see you on the next tutorial, yoga pose, mobility follow along, all that good stuff. Love you, bye.